Hi everyone, this is Rebecca Watson once again from Skeptic.org and from my last video I got a number of comments from people who really just wanted to know what the deal was with the cat wandering around um, so I'm sorry um, that she was such a distraction but I thought that this would be a good time to do less of a topical video and more of a personal kind of video. So with that in mind, I thought I'd show you the cat. So maybe in the future, she won't be so bothersome. And, uh, and then also give you uh, an idea of what I'm doing at the moment, um, what I'm reading and watching. And I don't know, people seem to enjoy that sort of stuff sometimes. So, so yeah, first, the cat. So first, I'd like you all to meet Dr. Calamari. Um, Dr. Calamari used to be fat, and now she's she's very skinny. Um, we're all very proud of her, uh, though we try to encourage her to have a healthy body image at all times. She's very snuggly and has gigantic alien eyes. <laughs> okay. So other things, I just thought I'd briefly mention what I'm reading right now, because just earlier this morning, I finished up an interview with Bruce Hood, who just wrote a great book called Super Sense, Why We Believe in the Unbelievable. And uh, it's very interesting. And I, I encourage you to check it out because it talks a bit about how even skeptics like myself might have this uh, this kind of supernatural influence, um, not an influence that's supernatural, but rather um, certain certain beliefs that might affect the way you uh, you act every day that might surprise you. Things like, for instance, um, would you wear a sweater that had previously been worn by Charles Manson? Even a lot of rational people w would kind of bristle at the thought of that. So Bruce explores the origins of that and why um, why we have these kind of remnants of supernatural belief that aren't entirely logical or rational. So that's interesting. Right now I'm reading Until Earth Set by Blake Stacy. He's, yes, a friend of mine. Um, and I'm not usually that into science fiction when it comes to literature, I read a lot of nonfiction usually. Um, but I, I'm quite enjoying it. He's Blake is a, a brilliant guy and it really shows in the writing. And Blake didn't mention this to me, but I found out soon after starting the book that fried beer makes an appearance. And if you've checked out some of my other videos, you know that I've had frying parties, which Blake has attended. Um, during which I fry beer, and it's delicious. So I'm kind of sort of in this book, in a way. Let's say my essence is in this book, but not in a dirty way. I don't actually have a TV, but I, you know, it's the internet, and you can watch tons of stuff. So I recently caught the first episode of a new TV show called The Listener, in which I a man can hear people's thoughts. Not all their thoughts, I guess. It's just really convenient thoughts. For instance, I'm totally about to kill you. Oh, it's really terrible. It's awful. It's one of the worst shows I think I've ever seen. Uh, that's not true. It's no, I guess that's no small wonder, but what is? Here's the thing. It's completely unrealistic. If you had suddenly found the ability to read people's minds, would you use that power to stay working as an EMT while saving people's lives and occasionally meddling in their lives like some kind of telepathic Mary Worth? No. You would go win a lot of money in poker and head off to an island. You know, Buffy did a great episode on this once. I know. I'm a nerd. But Buffy got these telepathic powers and 
there was a big flood of thoughts and craziness. And that makes a lot more sense because it's not like you walk around every day thinking in full sentences that are suddenly projected at a person. For instance, in the first few seconds of this show, the guy's walking down the street and he passes a beautiful woman coming in the opposite direction and he reads her mind, slight violation, but whatever. And she is thinking, boy, if only he could read my mind or something along those lines. Who thinks that? Have you ever been walking down the street and thought, wow, I really wish that hot guy there could read my mind? No, because you're not insane. And that's just it. Like the the show is full of insane people who do things that make no sense. So I'm going to give that one thumbs down. And to conclude, how about something about music? It's not entirely skeptical, but this is kind of a personal video anyway. So let's just go with it. I love Bill Callahan's new album, Sometimes I Wish We Were an Eagle. It's brilliant, it's beautiful, and the last song is called Faith Void, and the refrain is basically talking about how it's time to put God behind you. Um, so atheists in the audience might enjoy it, but you know, even if you buy into that whole God dealy, you might still enjoy Bill Callahan's music. It's really beautiful. So that's it my most personal video to date. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll try to keep up with this uh, schedule of posting and see you all next week. Bye. Oh, wait, one more thing. I almost forgot. Back to books. Infinite Typewriters by Jonathan Rosenberg. I really like John Rosenberg's comic, Goats. I read a lot of comics his is particularly good and it's been running for quite a while and he's got a book and it's fantastic it's beautiful colorful glossy and violent and in the first few pages someone tricks god into turning into a pork chop and then they eat him god dies in the first few pages and then because he because he turned into a pork chop it's brilliant so Go buy this if you like graphic novels and heresy and um, goats and chickens that are trying to rule the world. That's all.